Alexa, I'm home. It's great to have you back home. It's been a long time, right? Hey, what's up guys? JQ back with Tech Creation. First and foremost, I wanna thank you guys for still sticking around. I know four months without uploading is in a very easy way to be forgotten on this large platform. Coincidentally, you know, my hiatus was during the holiday season. So I used that time to just spend more with family and friends. And to be honest, it kind of felt nice. You know, sometimes it's easy to forget there's a real world out there. Basically, long story short, I was living somewhere and now I'm not. So some time ago, I did a video called the Future Proof MacBook Pro setup, which got some criticism, but for the most part, you guys really enjoyed it. And basically, this is the same setup, except I added a handful of things that not only make it look better, but it makes it a more productive workstation. So the idea of this setup is to basically take advantage of Thunderbolt 3 and to maximize its use to create a practical workstation that doesn't necessarily need to be interrupted whenever I upgrade my MacBook Pro to the latest one. Now I've already did videos on a bunch of these items individually plus the, including the setup tour itself so you can find those links down below in the description. So the first thing that I changed up was that table. I picked up this table from Ikea. This is called the Hollistad table and it's actually a double sided table. You got gray on one side and white on the other so you can use any side you'd like. And I just kind of like the look and the texture of it and it has this cool like metallic finish on the edge and kind of gives it that futuristic vibe that as you guys know, I'm a big fan of. This is actually a kitchen countertop, which explains why it's so long at 98 inches, and it's really heavy at about 84 pounds. So you wanna make sure you get proper support. So to the left, I'm holding it up with four Capita legs that I also picked up from Ikea. They support something like 275 pounds or something like that. Very sturdy, small legs. I'll drop a link to those down below in case you guys are interested. And then I have three Olav legs that I also picked up from Ikea. And I placed one in the center and then two on the opposite sides to make sure that this thing, this table doesn't cave in because it's really heavy. And so far, I mean, I love the look of it. Now, as you can notice, it's sitting on an Alex drawer, which is like a YouTuber's go-to drawer because Number one, it's cheap, it's only about 80 bucks, and it's sturdy, and it holds a lot of stuff. It has pretty decent storage for its size. So the Alex drawer comes in a variety of colors. I chose gray because that's one of my personal favorite colors, and it just matches well with the table. And the third thing that I've added was that white box in the corner. Now, that's nothing fancy. That's just a cable management box, so that's to hide power strips and search protectors, and that's just to make your area just look a lot cleaner. I didn't want to mount it under the table, and I didn't feel like putting it on the floor or anything like like that it also just makes your plugs a lot more accessible in case you want to add or remove anything in the future as you guys can see I've already plugged everything in everything's nice and tied up and organized you can't see it now and I'm not trying to remove it either but the search protector that I'm using is actually one from pluggable and I'll drop a link to that down below in case you guys are interested now the fourth thing that I've added, which you might've already noticed, is Google Home. Coincidentally, it matches pretty on point with the cable management box. And the reason I chose this Google Home, even though it was a year old, is because I had the Google Home Mini and there was just problems with it. It kept restarting and it just didn't sound that great. And I wasn't trying to buy the Google Home Max for 400 bucks. I just couldn't justify that at all. So I found the middle ground and I like the way this looks. I like the way it sounds and it just works great for me. Now the fifth thing that I've added is hard to avoid is this second monitor. This is a 32 inch 4K monitor by LG and on the bottom was this 27 inch monitor that I already had for my last setup and they're essentially the same monitor in a way. They both feature USB-C connectivity as well as 99% sRGB and I didn't really have to tweak with the settings too much. They both look great right out the box. The picture and video quality looks amazing on these monitors. It actually comes in handy a lot when you're editing and just doing everyday daily tasks. Any editor would know what I'm talking about. Some guys would prefer an ultra wide monitor, but me, I prefer a two monitor setup in the vertical position just because that's my preference. The more screen real estate, the better. It just makes things a lot more comfortable to your eyes and it speeds up your workflow just that much more. 
Now the sixth thing that I've added was a second RAID storage. Now I didn't actually go out and buy this. Let's see actually hooked me up. So shout out to them. No, they're not sponsoring this video or anything, but they just happened to take a look at my other reviews I did on their other products. And they said, hey, we love your video. We wanted to know if you want to check this out. So I said, send it right over. I wasn't going to say no. So this is the Lacy 2 Big. This is a 20 terabyte RAID under RAID 0 and it features two individual 10 terabyte Seagate Iron Wolf Enterprise class drives spinning at 7200 RPMs giving you max speeds of up to 480 megabytes per second which is more than sufficient for video editing if you wanted to but what I love the most about this RAID is that it's really meant for video editors. So it features a CF card reader as well as an SD card slot built in and a USB port. So it basically has everything that I personally need for video transfers and this is why I love Thunderbolt 3 is now I can use its available display port as well as USB-C connection to connect both of my monitors. So here's a quick breakdown of how I have everything connected together. I have the native MacBook charger to feed it constant power. In the second port I have the dock connected which then I have another Thunderbolt cable running out of the dock into the LC2 Big. And that's why I had the two monitors connected into the LC2 Big. And then on the third port, I have that connected into my LC Bolt 3, which is a Thunderbolt 3 SSD. Crazy fast speeds. I did a video on that as well. And then I have another cable coming out of the LC Bolt 3 into the LC6 Big Ray Drive. And then in the fourth port that's available on the MacBook, I have the Sandus Extreme 900 portable SSD attached to the bottom of my table via command strips. So in total, we're looking at 20, 20, two, and another one. So that's about 43 terabytes of storage. That's if I keep the LC2 big in RAID zero. I might just configure it in RAID one, just in case. I still have to work out how I want my new workflow to work, <laughs> you know? Now, two more items that I also did videos on separately. Uh, I'm using the Logitech MX Master 2S, great mouse. That Logitech Flow feature is fantastic and it complements any video editor out there. Highly recommend you get this mouse. And then I also have the Matthias wireless aluminum backlit keyboard that works with any MacBook Pro or Mac setup. It matches really nicely. This, this is something that Apple should have came out with. It has this nice aluminum finish, has a pretty decent battery life, and it's also backlit as well. Be sure to go check out the video I did on that. So basically to turn on the setup is just a matter of lifting the MacBook Pro lid and everything powers on. That's it. Personally, I think this setup is a testament of how great Thunderbolt 3 is and how far you can push it in terms of bandwidth. And in case any of you guys are wondering, here are the current speeds when everything is connected of all the drives individually. Now, a quick honorable mention, I'm sure you've already noticed by now, is that cloud right up top, the monitors. So I actually picked that up from a user off Etsy.com. People make things and sell them. So I bought off this lady, she makes them and it just has a strip of LED lights inside and it's controlled via remote. So whenever the lights are low, I can just hit the remote and it can cycle through a bunch of dif different colors, fading in and out nicely. And I think it just adds a nice element to the setup, especially when it's nicely dimmed. I have it hanging from the ceiling with invisible fishing string and it kind of makes it look like it's floating over my setup. Kind of like this is my brainstorm station. And also, you know, the cloud, tech, cloud, whatever, I guess you could use whatever definition you'd like. It, it fits well into the setup is what I'm saying. Like I said, I'm gonna do a separate video on the smart home stuff that I have set up in my apartment. I think you guys are gonna really enjoy that one, so be sure to stick around for that. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to show some love to that like button. And if you're new to the channel, thanks for stopping by. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on some more awesome tech videos. I wanna thank each and every one of you guys for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.